A steam plant using a castle steam boiler. This is part one of the introduction. The other day one of my customers brought some engines for me to look at. This is one of them that he built into a steam plant. The steam plant has two engines fitted to it, a counter shaft which drives the generator, which lights the lights, and a condenser, as well as a boiler on the same board, not to mention the water tank. No, I won't mention the water tank. The main engine in the centre of the board is very well made. It's a Stuart Victoria, but it's not working properly. And that is because it's impossible to tighten up the linkage for the valve. In both of the valve operating levers, there isn't enough metal to allow the bolts to get a good grip on the shaft. So my advice is to anyone out there building a Stuart Victoria, is to use a rectangular piece of metal, so you can have a deeper thread, which allows the pinch bolt to apply more pressure to the shaft. It isn't quite so important with the lever on the end of the shaft because you can use some Loctite 603 on that, but the valve link in the centre would definitely be better if it was wider. This steam plant, especially the engine, is really good to say that it was a first attempt. The quality of machining and the finish on the parts is exceptionally good. I'm not over impressed with the baked bean tin water tower, but you can't have everything. The boiler's very good though, it's a Stuart boiler. I'm familiar with this one because I sold it to the customer in the first place. It would, however, be better with a smaller burner head. This one is very fierce. On the same baseboard at the end is a Cotswold Heritage Perseus with a bit of a difference. It's fitted with a microcosm governor. And just in case you're wondering, this governor is fully functional and does what it's supposed to do. It keeps the engine at a constant speed and no matter how much I open the inlet valve to it, it doesn't go any faster. The whistle on the steam turret doesn't work. That's about as good as it gets. I'll close off the air supply to the Persis and see if the whistle's any better. No, this is a non-whistle. I adjusted the position of the top part which normally cures the problem but in this case it didn't. Normally when you adjust whistles of this type you'll find a sweet spot where it starts to sing but there isn't one here. Another engine that my customer brought to show me was this one. As you can see, it's a beam engine. He bought this one via eBay. After thoroughly oiling all the moving parts and connecting the airline, off it goes. And as you can see in here, it runs very sweetly. It was made by someone from Scotland and he turns out quite a lot of these types of engines. I've seen a few on eBay myself. One interesting and unusual feature is the rotary valve fitted to the steam chest. I'll stop talking so you can hear the sound it makes. And now in slow motion. This engine is very well made and very well put together. And the purchase price of this engine via eBay was very low indeed. Here's a test to see how powerful it is, and yes, it's fairly powerful as well. This is the first part of a series, and the series is all about building a steam plant using a special engine and a castle steam boiler. If you follow my videos, you've possibly seen this before, because I did some pipe work on it. I think I called the video a thing of beauty, and indeed this engine really is a thing of beauty. Up until now this engine has been used as a display item in an acrylic case. But now my customer wants to use the engine as part of a steam plant. And between us we've figured out the best way to do it. Here are a few random shots of the engine running on compressed air. Time for a bit more slow motion. So, what's the plan? Well, the plan is to make a steam plant that isn't massive to start with. I'm going to try and figure out the best way to put the components together on a board to make them look good. This is the start of the proposed layout. 
And here's the boiler, it's a Castle Steam boiler. As with all Castle Steam products, it's really high quality. This one is gas fired, and it uses two gas burners in the two flue tubes. Here is the basic proposed layout. Assuming the flywheel is the front part of the engine, the boiler is going to be behind it. And to save space, I'm going to make a special exhaust condenser. It's going to fit here between the engine plinth and the boiler. And to make this special condenser, I'm going to use a piece of copper tube, which will be two and a half inches in diameter, and approximately the same length as the boiler barrel. By making the condenser horizontal rather than vertical, I can save some space on the baseboard and it will still have a good water capacity. And yes, it's going to be close to the boiler, but don't forget it's not really a proper condenser, it's an oil trap. The only thing I don't like about this Castle Steam boiler is this, the turret, made out of a piece of hexagon. I intend to make my own turret and I'm going to mount the master steam tap on top of it. This master steam tap is one that you can close to empty the displacement lubricator. The main regulator tap is fitted to the engine. I'm going to mount a water pump, not this one, I mean a new water pump, down the right hand side and here in this shot you can see the twin burner assembly. I'm looking forward to creating this steam plant because I've got really good things to work with. The owner is making the baseboard for it and hopefully by the time that arrives I will at least have made the condenser and the turret. I'm going to leave the engine running till the end of the video, this part of course is in slow motion. All I'd like to say is as always stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.